Ever felt that um, intense pressure before a huge exam? You know, like everything depends on that one day. Yeah, that stomach churning feeling. Exactly. Well, for Class X students in India, that whole experience might be about to change quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're unpacking a really significant shift for the CBSE board examinations starting in 2026. And we're basing this on the official notification straight from the CBSE itself. So this is the real deal. Right. No speculation here. And our mission really is to cut through the uh, the official jargon. Yeah, get to what it means practically. Exactly. For you, whether you're a student listening, a parent, an educator, we want you to grasp not just what's changing, but, you know, why it matters. How it might reshape things. Totally. Think about a student who's great at science but gets sick on exam day. Oh, terrible luck. Right. Now, there's potentially a real second chance without losing a whole year. That's the kind of impact we're digging into. Okay, so let's get into the uh, the nuts and bolts, the big headline. Two exams. CBSE is implementing two board examinations for Class X, starting with the 2026 exams. Yep. Two attempts. It's a massive change. I can only imagine the buzz about this. So where did this come from? Well, it's directly linked to the National Education Policy, the NEP 2020. Oh, right. Specifically, it's trying to, and I'm quoting here loosely, Eliminate the high stakes aspect of these board exams. Reduce the pressure cooker feeling. Precisely. It's about giving more flexibility, more student choice, and offering this uh, best of two attempts system. Which hopefully eases some pressure. Maybe less reliance on coaching centers. That seems to be a major goal, yes. To loosen the grip of that intense coaching culture. Okay, so walk us through it. How does this two examination thing actually work day to day for a student? Okay, so first there's the main examination. That's mandatory. Right. And it happens around mid-February, pretty much like it does now. Standard timing. Then there's a second examination scheduled for May. And the second one, mm -hmm. it's not for every subject. No, not necessarily. It's primarily designed for improvement. Students can choose to retake up to three core subjects. Which are? Uh, science, mathematics, social science, and the languages. Got it. And what about internal assessments? Projects, practicals, that sort of thing? Good question. Those are only done once, before the main February exams. They don't repeat for the May session. Okay, makes sense. So the, the best of two part is key. Absolutely. If you take both exams for, say, maths... Your better score counts. Your better score is the one used for the final result. That's a huge safety net. It really is. What about results timing? That seems crucial for planning. It is. So results for the first exam, the February one, come out in April. Okay. And the results for the second exam, the May one, are decayed in June. So a bit of a wait for the final final picture if you take the second exam. Correct. And if a student decides, you know what, I'm happy with my February results, I'm not taking the May exams. What happens then? Their February performance is available in DigiLocker. That's the official digital platform and they can use that for Class XI admissions. Okay, so they can move forward. Yes, but, and this is a really interesting point, uh -huh. the official final passing certificate and you know the merit certificates everyone aims for, Yeah, those are only issued after the second exam results are out in June. Wow, okay, so even if you don't take the second exam, you wait until June for the official paperwork. That seems to be the implication. It standardizes the timeline for official documentation. That really does underline the significance of that whole May exam cycle, doesn't it? It absolutely does. What about um, difficult scenarios? Like what if a student is really unwell and misses a lot of the first exam? Right. Edge cases. Yeah. If you miss three or more subjects in the first February exam. Then what? You're placed in what they call the essential repeat category. Unfortunately, that means you have to wait and take the main exams the following year. You can't just rely on the May exams in that situation. Okay, so the May exams are for improvement or missed subjects, but not if you miss the bulk of the first round. Exactly. But there are some important allowances built in. Right. For students involved in sports, if their national or international events clash with the February exams, they can take the second examination in May. Oh, that's fantastic for student athletes. Yeah. Huge relief. Definitely. Also, students in winterbound schools, schools with different academic calendars due to weather. Right, in mountainous regions often. They get a choice. They can opt to appear in either the first or the second examination as their main attempt. That's thoughtful flexibility. Uh. And for children with special needs, CWSM students. Very important. All the facilities and accommodations available for CWSN students are extended to the second examination as well. Excellent. Ensuring inclusivity there. Absolutely. And just to be crystal clear, 
both exams, February and May, cover the full syllabus, right? It's not like the second one is easier or covers less. Correct. Full syllabus for both. No shortcuts there. Okay. Connecting back to practicalities for students moving to Classic Live. Right. If a student doesn't qualify based on the first exam results in April, they can get provisional admission to Class X Lee. Provisional. Okay. Then that admission is confirmed after the second exam results in June, assuming they qualify then. So it keeps the pathway open. It does. And one more practical point. Huh. Things like applying for a photocopy of your answer sheet or verification of marks or reevaluation. The usual post result processes. Exactly. Those will only be available after the final declaration of results for the second examination in June. So everything consolidates around that June time frame for official processes. Seems that way, yes. Okay, so summing up this deep dive then, the core idea is, well, it seems to be genuinely offering a way to reduce that intense academic stress. Yeah, a tangible second chance. A valuable second chance for students, potentially really changing how they, and maybe even teachers and parents, approach these exams. Which leads to, I think, a really provocative thought for you, the listener, to mull over. With this new flexibility, the safety net, how might students actually change their study habits? Mm -hmm. Could this genuinely encourage, you know, deeper understanding over just cramming for one make or break test? Could it redefine what academic success looks like beyond just that single score? Exactly. Will it foster real learning or just shift the pressure points? Something to think about.